Welcome guys and gals to why I love Arkham Asylum and of course Arkham Asylum is from the Arkham series and more so well known for the Arkham Trilogy which was Rocksteady. I know Arkham Origins is connected to these two but that wasn't Rocksteady. I know you can say they're all part of the same thing but I'm just going to focus more on the Arkham Trilogy since that was all Rocksteady. And let's go ahead and get into why I love Arkham Asylum. So first up we have that it is Batman. I am a huge fan of Batman. I've been a Batman fan my whole life, but this game made me a huge fan. Because growing up, I was I didn't come into this world till after Batman the Animated Series, so I didn't really grow up on that. I grew up on more like Teen Titans and uh, Justice League and things like that. But last couple years, or a couple years ago I should say, I watched the whole Batman the Animated Series and obviously it's phenomenal. So... But before I did that, of course, I mentioned all those other cartoons, which, yeah, made me a fan because I, I grew up on DC, and that's why I'm a huge Batman fan. But this game, I think, is what really got me into Batman because I think after I played this game, it just made me want to research more and things like that, and I just became a huge fan after I played this game. I'm sure it has a higher impact on people who were a huge Batman fan before to see a great game like this, but... For me, I'm kind of like the opposite. I play the game first, and, now, and then I'm a huge Batman fan, right? And with that, it helps me learn more about the lore, helped me understand the characters more, and, and helped me learn more about the villains and explore more villains. Because before this game, I maybe recognized a couple villains, you know, especially the main ones like Joker, Two-Face, Riddler, those ones. But with this, you have all of the profiles, and it helps me learn more about all the different villains that there are. So I know a lot of the villains now. And also it has the classic Batman the Animated Series voices for Batman, Kevin Conroy, Joker, Mark Hamill, and Harley Quinn, Arlene Sorkin, who is by far my favorite Harley Quinn voice. Because watching Batman the Animated Series, which was her first appearance, in case you didn't know, for Harley Quinn, I, I don't know why I just love Arlene Sorkin's Harley Quinn so much. To me, no offense to Tara Strong because she is great at voice acting, but I just find her Harley too annoying, in my opinion. So that's why I prefer the OG Arlene Sorkin, and then you can't beat Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. They're both great. And I just love hearing those voices. Next up, we have Simplicity, a.k.a. Less is More. Now, with this game, it is a smaller area since it's on Arkham Island. It has less characters, so it gives more time for development for certain characters. I mean, some still don't really get that much development, but others do. And it just, you know, you don't have to worry about as many characters. And although it is a pretty basic story, it is still a really good story, in my opinion. I mean, it is pretty basic. It's just, oh, Joker breaks everybody out. I mean, just the really really basic premise of it is that joker breaks everyone out of arkham asylum and then you just got to put everybody away that's really that's the really quick version of it but there's obviously a lot of other stuff that happens but even though it is kind of a basic story i still find it very very enjoyable and the last point which i'm sure everybody can give a huge hurrah with is that it probably has the fewest riddler challenges too yay because that is obviously one of the biggest complaints with the arkham games especially in the trilogy with Arkham City and then especially Arkham Knight is the Riddler and it's just all those Riddler trophies you have to get and it's just yeah I, I will admit it is kind of annoying and that's why I'm not saying there isn't a decent amount in this game there is but I just feel like it is the fewest but it's also kind of the least rewarding when you get it done because it's just some audio of him getting caught by the cops that's really all it is I mean I just wish you could get the location and just go beat the crap out of them because it's just it's so annoying Next up, we have the setting. It takes place at Arkham Asylum, duh, in one night. And that is, although that has been one of the criticisms with all these games, it doesn't really bug me so much, although I would be glad to see some change, is that it takes place in one night. I, I think they will change that with Gotham Knights. In fact, I think they are, but I'm not positive yet. But that is one of the criticisms is that it takes place in one night. People would like to see the day and night and things like that. With Arkham Asylum, I think just the one night, I think that works perfectly fine. But some of the later games, I feel like it's hard to believe that all that happens in one night. Whereas Arkham Asylum, I can see all that happening in one night. Arkham Asylum is one of the most well-known fictional prisons. I mean, pretty much everybody knows what Arkham Asylum is. I think everybody's heard of it at least once. Even if you don't know if it's from Batman or whatever, it's like if you say Arkham Asylum, people are going to be like, oh, that sounds familiar. And then since it is smaller, it is more of a claustrophobic feeling compared to the later games because the later games, it's way more wide open because Arkham City, it's a bigger prison. Arkham Origins, it's a really wide Gotham City. And of course, you have that really long bridge, which is annoying, obviously. But I mean, you can use the bat plane and stuff, so that's fun. But and then an Arkham Knight, that's a pretty big map, too. So the setting is very, very memorable. 
Next up, we have the boss fights. Now, granted, not all are good, but there are some still memorable fights. In my opinion, the good ones are Scarecrow, Poison Ivy, and Joker. Scarecrow is by far the best in this game, hands down. It's like it's not even close. I love going to the fear or the nightmare worlds and just trying to avoid his gaze and things like that. I just like how big he gets and trying to get out of the nightmare. I just found that so interesting. And of course, when it has that fake out glitch for the third nightmare sequence or whatever, where you think your game's crashed, I just, that was, I mean, the first time it wasn't funny, but like after you know that it's just fake, then it's kind of funny. It's like, wow, that's just crazy that they would do that. And um, Poison Ivy, I just like a lot because... I don't know. I just found it interesting. It was definitely the biggest. I th well, maybe not the biggest, but you know, I just found it interesting how you had to avoid the plants and then you had to time the batterings right and things like that. And then Joker, it was an okay boss fight, but I guess I'll still put it in good. And that's when he's Titan Joker, and you just basically got to avoid him and then use the back claw. It's really not hard, but since it was the finale, that's why I put it in good, even though it is kind of eh. So for me, Meh is Bane, Killer Croc, and Harley Quinn. Bane, it's just simply avoid him and just, you know throw a battering and punch him up. Basically, all that is. Killer Croc wasn't really a boss fight. It was just more avoiding him is basically all it was. Not going into the water and just you know when he does pop up, just throw a battering. Harley Quinn, she really doesn't do anything in the fight. She just she's kind of up above you the whole time. You just fight the goons and then eventually you fight her, I guess, or you just catch her. And then honorable mention, I guess you could say, is not really a fight. Is Victor's ass because that's like right at the beginning even though he does show up again later but right at the beginning it's somewhat a boss fight but I mean literally you just sneak up behind him and he's done so although the games later in the series do have better boss fights because like Arkham City with Mr. Freeze arguably one of the best boss fights in gaming history that's amazing and then of course you have Deathstroke and Arkham Origins which is amazing I know they get better later I mean Arkham Knight's kind of iffy but like at least in Arkham City and Arkham origins they're really really good but still i'm going to put boss fights because some of them were really good in my opinion mainly being scarecrow next up we have the easter eggs which i mean obviously most games have easter eggs but most games have easter eggs but being a batman fan i love seeing all the little details it lets you delve more into the lore and the mythos because as mentioned previously i mean i would know somewhat about batman stuff but especially if i were to play the game now which i mean i mean i played the story probably like 10 15 times but when you go back and after knowing all this stuff now it's like it's nice to see all these small details it's just you can see all the easter eggs be like i mean some of them are for riddler challenges so i don't know if you can really count that as easter eggs but the other ones are kind of secret so i just find that very very fun and it just lets you delve more into the lore of batman at last we have the combat and if you didn't know originally it was supposed to be rhythm based but they changed it to the free flow combat. Thank goodness, because I could not see it being rhythm based. Because basically all that means is when you get into a fight, it's like when you have to time the buttons right. So it's like it's going to say press square, press triangle and things like that. Could you imagine that now with the Arkham games? There's no effing way. But I'm happy they changed it to the free flow because it just feels like you're flying around. You're just beating the crap out of everybody. And with that, of course, you get to beat up bad guys so bad. And the stealth is very fun too with the detective vision getting to sneak behind people and taking them up to the gargoyles sneaking up behind them and just knocking them out i mean sometimes there's questionable ones where it's like how does that dude not dead but still the combat is very enjoyable in this game i just i love the free flow aspect of it and i could not imagine if it was rhythm based so in conclusion the six main points as to why i love arkham asylum are the fact that it has batman which i am a huge batman fan the simplicity, because sometimes less is more. The setting, it's a very memorable setting because everybody knows what Arkham Asylum is. The boss fights, although they're not all great, I still find a good chunk of them enjoyable, especially Scarecrow, hands down. The Easter eggs, especially later, knowing all this Batman stuff, going back and seeing all the little details here and there. And the combat, just being free flow and being able to just beat the crap out of all these criminals and bad guys, I just find that so enjoyable. So guys and gals, that is why I love Arkham Asylum. Do you agree or disagree with any of the points I made previously? And do you love or dislike Arkham Asylum? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, I'd love to see you all next time. Info.